you say 11 o'clock starting February, not next week? No, February, sorry, February. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> no, I get confused as to what day of the month it is. I don't even know. <laughs> okay. Yesterday was inauguration day. That was a big deal that I knew that, so. Yeah. I'm going to mute myself because we might have some plumbing issues and things going on here, so we'll see. <laughs> All right. Okay, so Karen's ready to go. So let's get started. Okay, so I do every other week floor or chair. Um, so this week it's floor. Okay, next week it'll be chair. But you can always do your yoga any way you like, whether you want to sit or whether you want to be on the floor or use a chair, it's up to you. Okay, we're going to move a little bit with practice. I think being more fluid with our body feels really good. But remember, don't do anything that hurts today. Okay? Don't do anything. I don't, uh, if Karen is listening, you can check the audio, but if it's, it could be an issue with the uh, connection. So do the best you can. Okay. Um, don't do anything that hurts. Rest when you need to. If you feel like doing something different, go ahead and do that. That's fine with me. Okay? All right, so let's start seated. Roll the shoulders back a couple times. There we go. Awesome, kind of relax the shoulder blades down. Reach up through the tops of the ears a little bit. Let's just take some easy breaths. There are many folks who do the beginning breathing seated in a chair and then move to the floor. And you can do that, of course, if sitting cross-legged isn't comfortable. I'm sitting up on a blanket. So you could always sit on the floor up on something, a cushion or a blanket. It makes it feel more comfortable for your spine, for your hips, and for your legs. So just find a comfortable seat wherever that is and close your eyes. Just breathe normally. Relax your forehead a little bit. Feel soft to the eyes and the nose. Relax your jaw. You can relax through the mouth area. You can leave your mouth a little bit open, that's okay. But you can really soften through the face and through the jaw because you don't need to talk. You don't need to respond to anything with your voice. Let the throat be soft. The top of the shoulders relax. You feel rooted through your hips and through the bottom of your body, but you're upright through the torso, lifted with a soft front and a strong back. Create a soft awareness on your exhalations. You don't have to change them or focus laser beam on them, just softly aware of your exhalations. Soft front, strong back. When you focus, on your exhalations, gently, softly, just a nice awareness. You can always come back to sensations in the body, softness of the shoulders, the upright posture of the torso, gently aware of your body sitting, how your body feels, and your exhalations. Thoughts may come and go to distract you, and that's okay. Every time you get distracted by a thought and you get the opportunity to let it go and come on back to feeling your body and your breath, you are practicing. You are doing the work, you're learning, teaching your body. Mm -hmm. 
let me focus on what you're intent to profess at this point. Thank you. <coughs> the reason that you cut off is tied to me. And if you want that intention, there's a feeling of kindness and compassion. Contributed by a nice, warm heart. Saying to self, it's okay. Things can be okay. It strengthens the attention. And move your body. Nobody you should like to move your body. Everything's a little different. So maybe you feel like moving your body in a certain way. Go ahead and do that. We're going to do some movements seated. And like I, uh, I, I mentioned at the very beginning, we're going to move in a little bit more of a flowy manner. That doesn't mean that you have to go fast. Just take it nice and easy and appreciate how it feels to go from one position to another. Okay. So seated nice and easy. Let's just start with those torso rolls. So we're just going to move our spine around the axis of our hips, right? So kind of think of it as stirring a pot with a wooden spoon, right? Our pelvis is a bowl. It's a bony ring. So, and if you think of your spine as long, it kind of makes sense. It would look like a, a pot and a spoon or a mortar and a pestle. Make sure that we circle in the other direction as well. Just kind of warm it up to the hips and the spine. up nice and tall. Let's roll the shoulders back and lift the heart and kind of widen the tailbone behind you. Let the belly hang down into your lap. Just reach up through the top of the chest and the head goes with you. You don't need to drop the head back. You can bring the elbows back. So you can get the front of the body to open up. Breathe on the next exhalation. You're going to tuck your tailbone under, round your upper back, relax the head down gently. So these are seated cat cows. And let's move from one to the other. Inhale, shoulders back. The whole front of you presses forward, tailbone lifts, inhale. Exhale, tuck under and round everything down, right? Tuck the tailbone, beautiful. Do this with your breathing. Inhale, press everything open on the front body. Let the tailbone lift behind you. Exhale, round the spine, soften the front body into the inside of the spine. Just do a few more as you inhale. And exhale, this just warms the spine up, even if these are very small movements. Inhaling and exhaling. Really noticing, how does your back feel today? And let's go back to the tall center position where we draw the shoulders back, we sit up, we move the flesh back a little bit so your tailbone lifts, good. Side to the waist are nice and long. Fingertips go out to the side. Let's inhale up the right palm and over a little bit. Oof, nice big stretch and switch. Inhale and exhale. Now, if you're sitting, you're going to notice that you rock a little bit. That's fine, but let's keep the hips heavy down into the seat. This will allow us to stretch in that area of the side of our waist from our hip bone to our armpit. Woohoo! Inhaling and exhaling. Move with your breath. Inhaling and exhaling. So that's what they mean when they flow with yoga. Move with your breath. And neither your body nor your breath should have to run to catch up with the other. <laughs> the audio keeps cutting in and out. Yeah. So let's try, let's try this. Wow, what's that? Yeah. That's not that's clear. Whoa, oh, oh, oh. That's worse. 
it better now? Now, 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 Sorry, everybody. I was trying something different. Okay, you don't know if they try. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, and I'm not sure it's going to stay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay. How are we doing? Good? Everything all right? Okay. Now let's inhale these up and then exhale to cactus. Nice. Try that again. Inhale up. Exhale to that cactus. Lift the chest forward. Oh, ho, ho. inhale up straight. Exhale, cactus. Lift the chest. Oh, I know you can do it. Inhale up. And exhale. Gorgeous. Release the arms down. Stay up nice and tall for the tops of the ears. We're going to walk the fingers forward. Nice. Over to one side. A little bit of a rounding of the spine. Back to center. So it's a little bit of a back bend, just a little bit. You can use blocks under your hands, just a little bit here. You're not bending very far over, just a little bit. And then out to the front, hands down, and just relax, just relax. I'm not doing a big forward bend here. This is nice and easy. I want you to feel comfortable in your spine. Your spine is rounding a little bit, that's okay. Then pull your belly button way in and then walk your hands in and come on up. So use that belly, pull it in, there you go. Great job, awesomely awesome. Pull those shoulders back. So we're gonna do a little bit of twisting. Hands here, inhale here, exhale, turn. So turn from your upper back, inhale, center. Exhale, turn, turn from your upper back, inhale, center, exhale, turn, good. Feel the shoulder blades on your back, moving one forward, one back. Inhale and exhale and center. So let's release the hands and bring them all the way up. Inhale, exhale, turn and float them all the way down. Pull that belly button in, great job on your exhale. Inhale, center, fingertips up. And exhale, turn, firm that belly in, keep the top of the ears rising up. Beautiful, inhale here. Do these a few more times as you go from front to the sides with your twist. You don't have to bring your arms up overhead if you don't want to. Everyone's a little different, okay? Keep the belly button drawing in. The purpose of these is to stay nice and tall. So when you inhale, lengthen your spine. And then when you exhale, turn. Good, beautiful, twisting at the spine. Use an inhale to lengthen the sides of the waist. And then the exhale to stay lifted as you twist. A lot of people will inhale and lift their torso up and then when they exhale, they'll pull the torso down. You don't have to pull the torso down. Keep everything lifted. You feel good, right? Inhale here and exhale. It doesn't matter how far you twist. If you want to look over your back shoulder when you twist, you can. Just keep your chin parallel. And back to center. <laughs> awesome job. Awesome job. So now we're just going to change this a little bit. We're going to take this right hand. We're gonna roll our shoulders back. We're gonna take this right hand as with a long torso over to the opposite leg. And this back hand can be on the floor or it can be in the air. It's completely up to you. So just rest your hand here. Reach, reach, reach. It's gonna be a little harder. That's okay. If you wanna put your hand on the other leg because it's, it's, it feels better for you, that's cool too. Gorgeous. Inhale here. And exhale, come back to center, center position. Now we're gonna try on the other side. Sit up nice and tall, inhale here. Exhale, place the opposite hand on the opposite leg. You can take this hand behind you or you can take it up in the air. I know this is a little harder, that's okay. Stay up nice and tall, breathe. Pull that belly button in, draw it in towards the spine each time you exhale. And inhale, release. Back to the center, exhale. Nice, good job, good job. All right, so let's take the hands, press one into the other and push up. Reach up through your palms and press down through your back end, up through the palms, down through the back end. Keep your head right between your upper arms. Woo. Inhale here, exhale, bring those hands behind you. Now you can hold on to a chair if you're sitting in a chair. You can put them behind you on the floor, on your blocks, completely up to you. 
I'm going to come down a little bit more, reach my chest up, 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 up. Nice. Now, if you want, you can extend your legs out when you do this. Even seated in a chair, you could straighten your knees a little bit, reach the heart up. Beautiful back bending, beautiful back bending here. I'm going to point my toes and really lift the whole front of my waist as much as I can in my heart. Inhale here and exhale, walk the hands back and come on back up. Great job, awesomely awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna move into the all fours position just for a little bit, okay? So I'm gonna take uh, my blanket aside. If you need to pad your knees with a blanket, go ahead and do that. Bring myself to all fours position. I have two mats here today, so it's gonna be a little bit softer. All this damp cold weather, my arthritis is acting up, so <laughs> I need a little bit more cushioning and padding. That's fine. Your knees are about hips width apart underneath your hip joints. Feet about hips width apart. I'm gonna put the top of my feet down. Good job. All right. Inhale here, exhale, sit your hips back. Here you go. Sit back a little bit. Then come on back up to all fours. So just slide the hips back and forth. You got it. So you're sitting back and then you're coming back up to all fours. Good job. So you're sitting those hips back and coming forward, sitting the hips back, forward. So now we're gonna sit the hips back and continue reaching out with the arms, reaching out, reaching out, reaching out. Beautiful, reach out, reach out, reach out. We wanna think of our shoulders as connected, but we don't want to feel like we're pulling our upper arm bones out of our shoulder sockets. So kind of hug, the muscles of your spine a little bit, the muscles of your arms in towards the bones and towards the center of you. Feel the back stretching, however, you should feel some lengthening in your spine. Head is between the upper arms. When you're ready, let's inhale forward. Nice strong belly here, knee down plank and exhale back. This can be done with your hands on a wall or on a chair. Inhale forward, strong belly. Good, nice, nice, nice. And exhale back. And inhale forward. And exhale back. And let's come on back to the all fours position now. We're gonna incur some twists. We're gonna do that by using our arm. So we're gonna take the left hand, inhale here, exhale, turn it underneath. And then come on back. Let's try the other side. You're just gonna take one hand, thread it underneath the other arm as you turn. Turn. And come on back. And try the other arm. Turn. Slide the other arm and turn, turn. They're beautiful. And come on back. So I don't care how low you go. Exhale, turn. Let the hips move as they will. Inhale. Exhale, turn, squeeze your belly as you turn, a little firmness there. Inhale, center, turn, and inhale, center. Great job. So now we're gonna sit the hips back and bring the forearms down. So we can rest down on our forearms. Circle your wrists a little bit. There you go. Uh, child's pose on your forearm, circle the wrists out. Awesomely awesome. Very good, very good. Coming back to the all fours position. So what I'd like to do is warm the legs up just a little bit. So from all fours, wrists are slightly forward, the shoulders spread the fingers. Let's stretch our right leg back, tuck our right toes under. Stretch that leg back, tuck the toes under. Ooh, and just kind of press the ball of the foot. Slide forward a little bit, get that back leg stretched. If you're standing or you're behind a chair, it's a calf stretch, right? When you press your one leg further back than the other and press the heel, it's a calf stretch. You're kind of opening up that whole back leg, keeping the knee straight. Great job, bring her in. Let's try the other leg, stretch it out. Press the heel, slide the hips back and forth. I love doing this, I think it's really great because you're straightening that leg, so you're kind of strengthening the muscles on the thigh. Think about that back leg, press that heel and then slide it forward so that you feel a nice stretch in the calves. 
back and forth. You're awesomely awesome. Okie dokie. So we're gonna get ready to lunch. So if you normally use blocks to lunch, use blocks or a couple books that are the same size. If you're in a chair, you would sit side in the chair to lunge. So from all fours, we're gonna pull the belly button in, inhale here, exhale, step the right foot forward. So if you're in a chair, you're gonna sit with one butt cheek on the chair and the other leg to the side, right? So if you're uh, close to the floor, you wanna put those hands on the blocks, right? Or, you know, if you're okay with your fingertips on the floor, but let's make sure the front knee and ankle line up. So that front bent knee lines up really well, okay? and even lift the torso up a little bit so you can straight strengthen or straighten the spine. Great job. Now, you have the other knee bent. If you'd like to practice what we did a moment ago, tuck the right toes under and straighten the right leg. If you're in the chair, we straighten out back behind you. And you can press forward, sliding the hips forward and back like we did just a moment ago, with our knee on the floor. Can get you a little bit more opening in that hamstring. And then you can bring that knee down. Great job. So from this position, I'd like you to put your hands on your thighs so your torso is up nice and tall. If you're sitting in a chair, you're already up tall. Hug your inner thighs towards each other to give you some stability. Inhale up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Let's use the cactus position. Inhale up. Exhale to the cactus or gold post position. Open the heart. You can even, like we've been practicing, slide the hips a little more forward. You got it. Great job. Inhale here. Exhale, come on back up and bring your hands to the floor. Great job. I want to stretch the back of the front leg. So walk the front foot forward and sit the hips back and lift the toes up. If you're seated in a chair, you would sit to the front of the chair and extend one heel out in front of you and hinge. This is lengthening through the front leg. Beautiful, beautiful, good job, good job. Toes up, I don't care if you can't unbend your front knee, but toes up, toes up, okay? Great job, nice, nice long spine, it's okay. Try not to let your head drop forward. Keep a nice long spine all the way through the back of the neck. and then slide the hips forward to place that front foot down. You're gonna engage your abdominals and begin to bring that front foot back and step back, good job. You move your hips a little bit and notice any difference you might feel from one leg to the other. And we're gonna work on the other side. So from the all fours position, wrist a little forward. Inhale here as you exhale, pull your belly button in and step your left foot forward to your left thumb. Use your blocks if you need to or your books you can take this front foot and even widen it a little bit if it feels more comfortable. And then we don't want to hunch down. So use your blocks or your fingertips on the floor to gently lift up the spine so it can lengthen and not hunch down, okay? So whichever, whether you're using the blocks or not, you want a nice long spine, widening the hips behind you. You're really gonna feel that and that's okay. So now you have the option, using the blocks or not using the blocks to tuck those right toes under and extend the right leg back behind you. Just keep the front knee and ankle lined up though, okay? So we're extending the back leg and we're lifting and lowering the heel and sliding the hips a little bit forward. Again, this is gonna be way easier if you have your hands up on blocks or on a couple of books that you might have, something that won't slide out from under you. So a nice opening up here. Inhale here, exhale, place that right knee down. Great job. So hugging the inner thighs towards each other and firming your belly in towards your spine. You're gonna walk those hands up. So stability is an issue. If you tuck your back toes under, you'll have more stability. Um, but it's less pressure on the knee if the top of the foot is down. So you have to decide what works. If balance is a big issue, widen this front foot out a little bit wider. Let's inhale those arms up. And exhale, hands to heart center. Keep hugging the inner thighs towards each other for stability. Now we're gonna inhale up and exhale to the gold pose position. Woo. Now you have the option of lifting the heart a little bit more as the shoulder blades draw together and slide down your back. You can even shift the hips a little bit forward like you did a few moments ago with the back leg. This is called Anjali Asana, beautiful crescent lunge. 
inhale here, exhale, come on back. Now you're gonna hinge down and you're gonna take that front foot forward, sit the hips back and straighten the front leg out in front of you. Again, if you're seated in a chair, sit towards the front of the chair and just extend that left leg out, heel down, toes up. We're just stretching the back of that left leg. We are bending forward over that front thigh a little bit. So the closer your hands are to the floor, there's a little bit more of around this, the spine. The further up away from the floor your hands are, the straighter the spine is. And that's normal. So you decide. So keep everything nice and strong. Don't collapse down. Keep lifting those toes up. And it's okay if you don't completely unbend the front knee. Just lift the toes up. Reach the hips back the best you can, okay? Breathe. I know this is a big stretch. There's a reason for it. And then we'll take the slide forward, place that foot down. Exhale, we're gonna bring that foot back. The all fours position. And let's find child's pose, shall we? Sit wide in the knees if you like. Sit the hips back toward the heels. Rest down. If you're in a chair, you would just fold over your thighs on your forearms or whatever works. Rest your head on your fists or on your hands. If you're on the floor, you could curl a little bit more, tucking the tailbone, rounding the spine, and even reach back for your heels. Whenever I reach back for my heels, I realize I need a pedicure. Oh well, I'm just gonna let that go. Grab the heels. I'm gonna tuck up and in a little bit, round the spine. Oh. Let your forehead rest on either your hands or your fists or a block if it doesn't easily rest on the floor. Awesome job. Push yourself up to the all fours position. All right. So in working with folks for a very long time in fitness and in yoga, one of the things a lot of people always wanted to work on was being able to get up from the floor. And this is a challenge, right? And I always say, hey, you got a chair nearby, you've got something nearby, use a prop to help you. But it's a nice thing to be able to have enough flexibility and strength to do that, even with assistance. So from the all fourth position, we're going to practice this a little bit, okay? From the all fourth position, just like we did, pull the belly up, inhale here, exhale, step that right foot forward. Now what we're going to want to do is step the left foot forward into a forward bend. So we're going to tuck the back toes under, the left toes under, and we're going to kind of lift our took us up, and then inhale and exhale, and step your back foot up to your front foot. Good job. You can do this with a chair. How do you do it with a chair? Well, if you have a chair and you put your hands on the seat of the chair, step back, then step one foot forward, then the other one. That's all. That's all that you need to do. Practice with your feet back away from the seat of the chair and step one up and then the other. So we're forward bending, whether you're forward bending on the floor, whether you have your hands on the seat of a chair. Let's practice moving this position back to downward facing dog. So those of you using a chair, just place your hands on the seat of the chair or the back of the chair. Those of us here close to the floor are gonna bend our knees and place our hands on the floor, about shoulders width apart. And then we're gonna step our right foot back, way back. And then we're gonna press into the floor with our hands and step our left foot back. Then we're gonna bend our knees and reach our tailbone up and straighten our arms, pressing our hands down, down, down into the floor or the seat of the chair. You can follow by lifting one heel and then the other. You can just hold this position. Your spine should feel long. Let the weight reach up back through the back of the hips. And if you're going to plant your butt cheeks up on the wall behind you. So lift them up. Great job. The problem is we have to come back to forward bend. Inhale and exhale, pull the belly in, step the left foot forward. It may take a few steps. Then step the right foot forward. So you're in a forward bend, either over the seat of your chair or on the floor. Great job. This is not an easy thing to do. Great job. Okay. Can we do it one more time? I think we can. 
bend the knees a bit, plant the hands, step your left foot back first, and then your right foot. Push forward and down, forward and down with your hands, straighten the elbows, bend the knees, lift those hips up. Come on, you can do it. Nice, you can pedal the heels. You wanna lift your tailbone up, lift your butt cheeks up towards the upper back wall. Push forward and down through the hands like you're pushing the floor away. Pull your belly button in. Great job. Inhale here. Exhale to all fours. Ooh, ooh. Sit your hips back so you can rest your wrists, okay? So let's sit in our chair or in our child's pose and rest our wrists, okay? In some circles. Ooh. Great job. Very good, very good. Okay. So what we did was we moved from forward bend to downward facing dog and back. What I'd like to practice is downward facing dog to knee down lunge. This is easy. If you're in a chair, it's even easier, right? Because you can press back to downward facing dog and then step one leg forward for your lunge, okay? So let's practice this. So we have to move into downward facing dog. Woohoo! All right, so wrist slightly forward to the shoulders, spread the fingers. Make sure when you're pressing your hands into the floor for any of the postures that you press more to the inner part of your hands, base of index finger and thumb, not so much into the pinky side, okay? And the wrist joint should be slightly forward of the shoulder joints. Turn your inner elbow creases in to look at each other. Tuck your toes under, or if you're using a chair, step your legs back. Two, downward facing dog, hips go up. Exhale, step your feet back. Good job. Let your hips stick up. Strengthen, pull your belly button in a little bit more. You reach your hips up and back behind you. Great job. Okay. We're going to inhale and exhale here, pushing our hands. And I'm going to ask you to bring your right knee in and step your right foot forward to your right thumb. This may take a few steps. It's okay. And if you're near the floor, bring your left knee down. Good job. Now, walk that torso up. So you're in lunge pose. You have one foot forward, one foot back. There you go. If you're using a chair, you're not down on your knee. You've got your, your, your back foot back behind you. Great job, everybody. Open up if you want. Give a little bit of opening. Woohoo! Check this position. Inhale here. Exhale, fold down. Great job. But now we want to step back to downward facing dog. Can you do it? Place your hands. Inhale and exhale. Step that front foot back. Reach the hips up. Back to downward facing dog. Great job today. Remember a downward facing dog? You look like a big capital A. So lift that tailbone up. That's the point of your capital A. Pull your belly button in. Then when you're ready, you're going to bring that left knee in and forward, stepping the left foot forward to the left thumb, right? Adjusting, taking as many steps as needed, and the right knee comes down if you're at the floor. If you're not, you just have your front foot forward and your back foot back. Roll the shoulders back, bring the torso up. Good. This is lunge. If you're using a chair, you can put your back heel on the floor if that's more comfortable, okay? Let's inhale all the way up. Nice. We can exhale the arms to the goal post or cactus position. You can even reach the hips forward. A lot of options here for what we've already done. Inhale here and exhale. Great job. <laughs> Inhale and exhale. Step that back foot back. Let's sit in child's pose. Woohoo! Bring the forearms in. Give your wrists a little love. Just take a rest. Good job. Round the spine a little bit in your child's pose. Breathe softly so you can just be aware of your exhales. Okay, so. We're just gonna do a little bit more of this and we're gonna make it as simple as we can, okay? So I don't want anybody to, to do too much. 
we're going to add some of the things that we've been doing together. All right, that's what they mean by flow. To place in a special way as you move from one pose to another. Okay, so we're going to start in downward facing dog. Okay, so find your position, hands on either the seat of your chair or the back of your chair or on the floor. Make sure the chair's not going to move on you if you're using the chair. I'm going to tuck my toes under from all fours and press back to downward facing dog. You got it. Good job, good job. Okay, so we want to move into the lunge pose. So you're going to step the right foot forward, bringing the left knee on the ground. Right? Or there you go. So now we have right foot forward, then come up into your lunge, your knee down lunge, or if you have a chair, your full lunge, bring those arms up. So do the lunge, bring one knee down. You got it. Reach up, reach up, really slide the hips a little forward if you're on your knee. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Inhale here, exhale, fold down. Okay, so here's where it changes. I'm going to ask you to step the back foot up to the front foot for a forward bend. Ready? Step up. You got it. Now you forward bend. You're forward bending with your fingertips on the floor, your blocks, your shins, or you've got your forearms on the chair, your forward bend to the seat of the chair. Great job. Everybody with your fingertips, either on the floor, your blocks, or the seat of the chair, Straighten your elbows and extend the sides of your waist a little more forward. Inhale. As you exhale, soften and round your spine. Great job. Let's try that again. Inhale, extend the sides of the waist forward. Your feet should be about hips width apart or wider, so make that adjustment while you're down here. And then exhale and soften into your forward bend. Okay, so now we're going to do this in a little bit of a backwards way. Now I'm going to ask you to step your right foot back to lunge. So if you're near the floor, you're gonna step the right foot back and bring the right knee down. If you're using the chair, you just step the right foot back. Front knee is bent, walk your hands up. So you're tall with your torso. Good, so you're in the lunge, this time with the opposite leg forward. Inhale up and exhale, press the hips a little forward, open up the chest. You can do goal post position, cactus position, or you can reach your fingertips up. Everyone's different, but you want the heart to open. So whatever works, gorgioso. And inhale here and exhale low. Nice job. Now you get to step back to downward facing dog. So place your hands, step your front foot back, do your back foot for downward facing dog. This is the last dog you're gonna have to do, so bear with me. Nice, great job, great job. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Let's inhale forward onto our knees. And exhale in the child's pose. Great job, everybody. I really don't think we need to go through this anymore. So find a resting place. Find your child pose. Just rest. We're, we did. You did a great job. All right, and then when you're ready, come back to all fours. Now we're gonna get ready for Shavasana. We're gonna do some back stretching, a little leg stretching. So we're gonna lay down on our backs on the floor. You did a great job. I know that was challenging, good job. You're gonna slowly bring yourself down Woo. and bring your knees into your chest whenever you're ready. If you're in a chair, you can bring one knee in and then the other. So if you're in a chair, you can do it that way. Bring a knee in, hug in towards your thigh. And your back, bring both. Okay. Let's bring our feet to the floor. 
good job. I'd like to do a little bit of bridge pose, all right? Bridge pose is a little bit more challenging. Uh, seated in a chair, um, basically you reach, if you're seated in a chair, you reach your hands behind you and lift your chest, okay? For those of us on the floor, ankles underneath the knees, knees or hips width. We're gonna kind of tuck our shoulder blades underneath us, bend our elbows, and on the next inhale, we're gonna lift up. So li there we go, lifting up the gluteus by stretching your knees away from you. So really think about pressing through the feet, stretching the knees. I got this robot position going on, opening my heart. Tuck those upper arms in, great job, great job. Press into the feet, stretch the knees. Very good. B-E-A, beautiful. <laughs> Take a few breaths here. And as you exhale, widen your shoulders and come on down. We're gonna do some twisting. So feet on the floor, knees bent, relax the arms out. You can either take your feet off the floor or keep your feet on the floor. It depends on how you're feeling right now. But inhale here and exhale your knees over to the right. But oh. everything relax and open. It's a nice twist, just relax. My knees are twisting over to the right. So I can turn my head to look over my left shoulder. Good job. So if you can soften a little bit. Soft front, strong back. Take a nice inhale here as you look forward. Exhale, pull the belly in, bring the knees up. And let's inhale and exhale them over to the other side. Doesn't matter whether you have them knees in close to your chest, feet off the floor or feet on the floor. It doesn't matter. Bring them over to the other side. There we go. Just breathe. If when you're laying on the floor doing these twists, I know that one shoulder is gonna come up off the floor. Don't try to press it back down too forcefully. Just see if you can soften and wiggle a little bit to maybe widen the shoulder blades apart across your back. And you'll find it a little bit easier to relax here up and back against the floor. And again, you can, my knees are facing the left, so I turn my head to the right and look over my right shoulder. Just make sure you're not lifting your chin when you do that. You want to keep your chin nice and parallel and you look over the shoulder. And we're going to back towards the ceiling. Inhale here. Exhale, hug your belly and your inner thighs. Bring this back in. Oh, nice job. Nice job. Those feet on the floor. Okay. Put your arms overhead. Woo. If you want, you can stretch your legs out. Oh. If you're seated in the chair, just straighten your legs out in front of you. You got it. Press through your heels. Toes up. Yeah. Awesomely awesome. And then you're gonna bend the knees, feet on the floor, bring those hands down. Oof. All right, so I'd like to do happy baby, okay? So we need a little bit of hip stretching. So we're gonna bring the knees in towards the chest, okay? Bring the knees in towards the chest and widen your thighs apart. So you're gonna widen your thighs apart. So if you're seated in a chair, widen your knees apart, okay? Good. And then take a nice inhale and exhale and hug these thighs so that the knees widen to the side and come in towards your armpits and the bottom of your feet flat. So if you're in a chair, take your legs wide and fold your chest down between your legs a little bit. So forward bent with wide legs, okay? That's what you would do if you're in a chair. Yeah. So you widen the knees apart and fold in towards your thighs. You got it. Just relax your hips. This is like sitting in a forward bend with your knees wide. That's all. Okay. Woohoo. And bring that together. 
Great job. I'm going to bring the feet down. I'm going to bring the soles of the feet together and widen the knees out. Relax here in Supta Baddha Konasana, what is reclining bound angle pose. You can put blocks underneath the outer knees if they don't come close to the floor. You don't have to worry about that. Let's take a few breaths. Oh. Are we ready? We're going to bring the knees together. Okay. All right. So now we're going to bring the right knee in and put the right foot and ankle over the top of the left thigh. Yep. You. This is awesome. So if you're seated in a chair, you can bend over. We're going to bend your for, bend your torso over your legs. If you're lying on the floor, you can bring your legs to you. Okay. So bringing that left foot off the floor, hands behind the left thigh. But if you're seated, just lean forward. Just lean forward. You got it. Some folks don't like to do this. They want to keep their foot on the floor. That's fine. They call this the thread, thread the needle. I call it number four. To me, this is the number four stretch. Keep this foot nice and strong. Widening the right knee out to the right. Beautiful. Now, if you like, you can take the left foot to the floor. So you're still in this number four position, right? an angle crossed over the top, but rock across the back of your hips a little bit. So rock back and forth across the back of your hips with this leg still crossed over. Gorgeous. Very nice. And if you want, you can add the twist by bringing this right foot over to the floor. So this is a twist. So you're basically, if you're seated in a chair, hold the position and twist your torso towards that upper bent knee. You got it. You. When you're ready to come out of this, you need to squeeze your abdominals on an exhale. So inhale, exhale, squeeze everything in, bring those legs back up. Great job. Now we're going to switch. We're going to put the other leg on top. You're doing great. The cross over like a number four, left foot and ankle over the top of the right thigh. This may be challenging enough, right? We're widening the left knee to the left. We're pressing. Make sure you're spreading the toes on this left foot. It's nice and bright. If you like, you have the option to either bend your torso forward over your legs if you're seated on a chair or to lift the right foot off the ground and place your hands behind. So everybody has their choice. The point is to bring the legs and the torso closer together. <laughs> that's the twist, okay? So if you can bring the legs and the torso closer together, that's the deal, that's the thing. Awesome. And it's okay, this is a big stretch, so be careful. Just keep your toes bright, keep your foot active. Very often tight hips will skew the tracking of your knee joint, your ankle joint. So when we're particularly trying to stretch tight hips, we have to make sure to keep that foot strong at the bottom of our leg so that we can keep our knee and our ankle in line. We don't want them to get skewed, okay? And now you have the option of putting that right foot back in the floor and just kind of rolling across the back of the hips. A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. So we're just twisting a little bit to each side, just a little bit, just a little bit. So if you're seated in a chair, you'd be turning your torso, not your legs. Pretty cool, huh? All right. And then when you're ready, you're going to inhale here. Exhale, twist your legs over to the right to bring the left foot to the floor to the right of you. So if you're seated in a chair, you're going to turn your chest towards that upper bent knee. You got it. Just breathe. Ah, stay up nice and tall if you're seated. Let the floor hold your spine nice and strongly. You can wiggle your shoulder blades apart a little bit. Doing great. When you're ready on the next exhalation, 
pull your belly button in, bring your legs back up and uncross. Good job. Awesome. Awesome. You bring your knees into your chest again. Give yourself a little hug or give yourself a forward bend, whatever works for you. What I like to do sometimes at this point is slide the block underneath my sacrum for that uh, supported uh, bridge pose, or you don't have to do that. You can take the block, lift your tuchus, slide the block underneath the flat bony part of your sacrum and lift your legs in the air. Now you can't do this if you're seated in a chair, however. You, you could put some kind of bench or height, if you're seated in a chair, you could put bench or height underneath the bottom of your feet and just elevate your legs a little bit. But here, this is just a legs up the wall kind of deal. If you're at home and you have two chairs, you can bring another chair facing you and put your legs on that chair. So you definitely can try that too at some point. Sometimes with chair yoga, it's nice to have two chairs. Okay, just kind of, kind of sit up here for a minute and then I'm gonna let my knees bend and then I'm gonna place my feet on the floor so that the bridge stays restorative. So I'm just relaxing. If you're seated in a chair, this is a little gentle back bend. So maybe just hold on to the back of the chair. Just give yourself a little back bend. Try not to get too crazy with it. Just let the chest soften and the belly soften forward. That's all. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Doing a great job. Many people find this part of the practice the hardest as we get ready to move into the <clears throat> to Shavasana or resting pose. So when you're ready, you can remove the block. Now, once you remove the block and you bring yourself down, I'd like you to either do a little bit of a twist from side to side or stretch your body out long. It's whatever works. But after you do a back bend, a twist or a nice lengthening stretch is really good, okay? So that's a very nice thing to do after a back bend. All right, okay. Now we're gonna bring the arms down. We're gonna move into Shavasana. If you're using a chair, you're gonna find the most comfortable way to sit in that chair. You might wanna put like a lap blanket over your legs. Just wanna kind of really widen back into your chair. So when you do sit up and if you lean against the back of the chair, you still have a little curve in your lower back, okay? And if you're laying on the floor, you can let everything go. Some folks don't, aren't comfortable laying on the floor. They can put a blanket or something underneath the back of their knee. And that'll make it um, a little easier for them to lay on the floor. So if I have my blanket here and I put it down so that it's behind the back of my knees, then it's a little more comfortable for me because my legs aren't completely straight. They feel a little bit more supported, which is kind of nice. Sometimes it feels a little easier on the lower back and the hips when you have a little bent in Whatever. Find a way to relax. Rock your back of your head. It's always nice to turn your head a little bit to the right and the left. Your head is a mobile turret, okay? And it's meant to move smoothly to the right and left to the top of your neck. All the vertebrae in your neck are designed for you to be able to move that head nice and smoothly, particularly to the right and left. You have a lot of capacity to twist in that cervical spine. But the minute you start lifting up your chin, the more you stick those vertebrae, they get stuck. You try to keep the chin nice and parallel when you look over your shoulders. It's just beautiful, smooth feeling. It's the smoothest gliding. The gliding of the joints and cervical spine is just gorgeous. Okay. And then release, nice and comfortable. It's going to feel a little bit like your chin is tucking if you're lifting your ears up towards the ceiling if you're seated, or if you're kind of lifting the back of the skull a bit on the floor and placing that ridge right on the floor underneath you. The occipital ridge is right before your skull curves inward. Okay. And you can relax your hands or arms wherever you like, close your eyes. It's really nice in Shavasana for you to have a blanket nearby to keep yourself warm or to have warm socks to put on your feet. You know, there's no discounting the importance of rest. And I don't mean just rest when you're sleeping. That's really important. But I mean, also being able to rest at any point that you feel you need to, not just your body, but your mind a little bit. So go ahead and close your eyes. 
and once again, just become really softly, kindly aware of your exhales. Just the exhales. You don't have to change them. You don't have to be, you know, laser focused on them. Uh -huh. Just see if you can just focus on the exhales. And there are times when thoughts come in, you're telling yourself stories, you're thinking about what's going to happen next or what happened last week. See if you can move away from those stories. Kind of like sitting in a cave behind a waterfall. That's a really nice visualization. When you've got all these thoughts coming at you, see if you can move away from them, back away from them, into a small cave behind the waterfall of your thoughts. See them rushing, you can maybe even hear them, that you're seated in the cave, breathing, aware of your exhalations. There's nothing wrong with a thinking mind. That's why it was created. But sometimes all that thinking and chatter gets in the way. We want to create a little bit of space, space for general awareness, of whatever happens at this moment. So sometimes we have to step away from all that chattering of our mind. We acknowledge it. It's our mind thinking, and that's okay. But we can step back away from that and just sit with our bodies and our breath. You don't have to be so reactive all the time. Just responsive to what your body feels right now. Just aware of the feeling of the breath as you exhale. Just creating a space for you just feel what it's like to be you. But please know you can stay in your shavasana long after this video is ended, this Zoom is ended, okay? And please do that. And everything you need nearby to be comfortable and stay in this for as long as you like. All right. Remember, and when it's when you feel like you've had enough shavasana and you want to, you know, come back up, that you are very mindful, slow moving, lie on the floor on your side for a few breaths before you sit up. Stay in your Shavasta. I'm happy to claim if you do that. Thank you for joining me. I honor the divine teachers within all of you. May we all find peace, no matter what we are given. Namaste, my friends. See you next Thursday. <laughs>